prepositions. So this video defines the meaning of the term preposition and its role in Old English as a modifier of a noun or noun phrase. It looks at the role case plays in determining the meaning and use of prepositions in Old English sentences. So from the Cambridge Dictionary we have these definitions for prepositions. So in grammar, a word that is used before a noun or noun phrase or a pronoun connecting it to another word. So we've got things like we jumped in the lake. In is a preposition. Uh, she drove slowly down the track. Down is another example of a preposition. So in the sentence, the dog jumped over the wall, the word over is a preposition. Now some prepositions consist of more than one word, such as out of. And they're commonly used to show a relationship in space, time, or between people, things, and places. So, the last time I saw him, he was walking down the road. I'll meet you in the cafe opposite the cinema. It was difficult to sleep during the flight. It was the worst storm since the 1980s. Give that to me. All the hot words involved there are examples of prepositions. So, Old English prepositions require their objects to be in a particular case. And it's often a dative or accusative case. The meaning a preposition takes depends upon the case it is in. And some prepositions determine the case an object can take. So, for example, the preposition through, meaning through, usually requires this object to be in the accusative case. Not always, but often, usually. So, in the sentence, he rides through the town. Town is the object of through, and so. And when we use this word object, by the way, we're talking about the object of a preposition. Uh, we're not talking about the accusative case. And so when we translate this sentence to Old English, we put Seitun, the town, into its accusative form, Fone Tun. So the definite, definite article goes from Se to Fone, being masculine. Tun has the form, same form, whether it is accusative or nominative, so Tun. So we have Fone Tun. And that's the accusative form. The noun tune is masculine, has the same form when in the nominative and accusative cases, but the masculine singular form of the is thona, which I've just gone through. He rideth through thona tun. He rides through the town. Another word that usually requires this object to be in the accusative case is the word yeon throughout. So let's look at the sentence. She rides throughout the land where Land is the object of throughout. So the Old English word land, or land in Old English, is a neuter noun. And so the accusative neuter form of the word the is that, which is required because the preposition yeon requires the object of this sentence to be in the accusative case. So the land must be that land. He rideth yeon that land. She rides throughout the land. The word after requires its object to be in the dative, and so in the sentence after the words, we are compelled to write the words the and words in their dative plural forms, which is going to be than wardum. So the sentence reads after than wardum after the words. So the next couple of pages will give you a list of very commonly used uh, prepositions, starting with after. So in the accusative is after, according to, along. In the dative, after, according to, along. Both have the same form, accusative and dative. Ar, before and before, in the accusative and dative. At, as far as, until, up to. Now notice the dative form is a little bit different. At, from, by. So it depends on what case this word is in. Be, by, alongside, along, about, near, in relation to. And the same over here again for the dative. So these two don't differ. Be, far, run. Uh, same again here, both are the same, before, in front of, ahead of, in the presence of, both the dative and accusative are the same. Betwerks, betwerks, between, among, same for accusative and dative. Binan, within, into, same again. Uvan, Above, upon, same for both. Bhutan, except, outside, without, and the same for the dative. Ayak, only the dative, besides, in addition to. Far, before, in front of, because of, in place of, for the sake of, and again, both the same. 
from, dative only, from, by, yeond, throughout, same again for dative, in the dative case, in, in, into, both the accusative and dative uh, forms are the same, inun, in, within, in, within, and also for the genitive as well, mid, among, with, by means of, among, with, by means of, accusative and dative, they're the same again, off, only the dative, from, of, over, above, over, on, the same for accusative and dative, on, meaning in, into, on, in, into, on, both the same, accusative and dative, on, yayan, against, towards, same for the dative case, off, up to, until, the same for the dative, now, tall, for the accusative, towards, for the dative, towards, to, at, near, as, against. For the genitive, at, for, so, to, such an extent. To such an extent, sorry, is the last bit. Tolyeyeness, against, towards, for the dative only. Urgh, through, throughout, by means of. Now the same also for the dative and genitive. Mostly it's used in the accusative sense. Mostly, but not always. Under, under, beneath, same for dative. With, towards, opposite, against, along, in the exchange for, same again for the dative, and the same for the genitive as well. Umbe, or umb, after, about, or concerning, after, about, or concerning. Now for those prepositions whose dative and accusative are the same, it is still possible to distinguish them in the sense that they are used. So the dative is generally associated with position, while the accusative is generally associated with a sense of movement towards something, someone, or some event. So one is position and one is a sense of movement towards. Now prepositions often follow the word that is their object. Him befaran, him befaran, before him. Before and is in the dative, and so him is the object that must be in the masculine singular dative, hence him. Him tall against them. To is in the dative, and so him is the object that must be in the dative plural. So him is the dative plural for them. And that is it.